This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward, friends. This is the final episode of a five-part series with Jimmy Canelli, And we are talking about leading through an era of change in coffee throughout this series. And we have deep dived into a lot of really fascinating parts of, of this discussion. Today, we want to tie it up. And Jimmy, I want to ask you about harmony in the workplace and how leaders or managers or business owners can work together with their employees to achieve the kind of harmony that I think everybody gets into coffee to want to experience. As we traverse these challenging times that we're experiencing and as we sail into deeper challenging times, how do we achieve that harmony by working together? I love this question. I think the biggest thing everyone can do is listen again to their staff. If you want to be heard, you have to sow into actually listening. When, Mm -hmm. when you hear other people, they're going to hear you and you're going to earn their respect. And I think the generation that is working in cafes of all ages needs to be listened to. I think there's important things they want. And sometimes we can't give it to them as business owners or managers, but we can work together to create something that's good i think for them so i i think some of the things that i often feel and hear from like my team is flexibility with staff with scheduling um which means i need to be work on my scheduling i think they want education and we talked a lot about that in a past episode and so i need to be really clear on what it looks like to get people through different programs that are going to grow their craft Um, So our coffee academy program is one big one. Um, I think people want to learn how to de-escalate tough situations. And Starbucks is doing a pretty good job of getting that training out to everyone. I did a training with uh, Avatar. So an actor that was digitalized and we did like scenarios, both as customers and as like employees. So there was like coaching with an employee that was upset or had something to work through and then like situations with customers. And so I think that type of stuff is helpful, but how do you role play, do scenarios? We did a lot of that when Mm -hmm. we shut down our cafe um, to get into training. That's some of the things that I hear and that Starbucks has heard from people. I think you got to assume a lot though um, of things that get in order first. So your operations, workflow, scheduling, inventory, you, you mentioned customer acquisition, like how do you actually get people in the building? Mm-hmm. When you're run, you have to be running your business um, at least good, if not well, to really be able to also take action on a lot of what you hear. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes you need to stop completely to be able to listen, but you also sometimes need to be, act- the, the ship needs to be moving and making money. So you got to answer those questions, I think right alongside figuring everything else out but yeah it really is a delicate balance when we talk about harmony it's this uh idea of when do I focus on revenue versus when do I focus on the crisis that's happening in my team and which should take priority when should it take priority Mm -hmm. who navigates that who determines when something is an emergency and when it's not an emergency how do you, as a, as a manager, cultivate the wisdom to make those decisions and trust your team to be able to respond, to navigate their way towards harmony rather than towards chaos? I think there's a couple of things. I think it's hard to come in and really, when I'm walking in, so first moment, what is their impression and their interaction with me when they first interact with me in the day? So how do I make a point of getting the read on each of my team? And how do I find out what things I need to bookmark in my head? So what are they telling me or not telling me, but showing me that needs to be discussed? And then when can I do that? So making sure I have space in my schedule, um, making sure my store is staffed. Those are the two things that would take you out if you just over 
busy work yourself and you get so focused on all the things you need to manage, or if you're managing too much and maybe your supervisors or barista leaders or head baristas aren't managing enough and you're just taken out by all the work. So those things are the things that disqualify you because you just get, you're doing the work in someone else's lane. Mm -hmm. Um, So being able to have that white space in your schedule or knowing what levers you can pull to, to free yourself up. So I really try and build in both those connects and Starbucks does a good job of creating content for discussions to happen, but you also want to be able to have authentic in the moment conversation. So having your store staffed appropriately, so you aren't filling in call outs is another huge thing in the era we're mm-hmm. in because of health, because of sickness, um, that stuff can also just take you out because you're just trying to keep up. So yeah, we're seeing that a lot, aren't we? We're seeing a lot of places say we're closing at four o'clock today because we can't stuff the store yep. when they normally open until 10 p.m. Or people permanently shifting to saying we're going from seven days a week to five days a week because we're just buried under the the stress of trying to find staff. Yeah. Just uh, if anyone is listening to this and are trying to get access to some similar training to what Jimmy's talking about, uh, we have assertiveness training and communications training that we offer at Map It Forward. Uh, I work specifically with teams and can give anybody any kind of testimonial uh, from people who have undergone this. It is transformative for a team to get unified language in the way that they communicate with each other. And the transparency that you get from understanding the different ways that people approach communication can be life-changing for people as individuals, but for the life of the business as well. You find that teams are very open um, about the way that they communicate with each other once they have unified lang- unified language. So getting in touch with us. I know, Jimmy, you've, you've watched the- I've done so- the training. Yep. Yeah. And I reference it a lot with baristas often wonder- but can't put it into words. How do I be assertive? Because I feel like if I'm being nice, I'm letting people walk all over me. And so that's the main thing I try and help people with of talking through boundaries with customers while being kind and being clear and being assertive and not just being a doormat. At the same time, usually they feel like they need to overcompensate and panic attack on the customer who's already upset. And so I think the assertiveness training also helps, I think, with the customer service side yep. and customer connections. As we wrap up this episode, I have to say something to you publicly. I have to say that you are an inspiration for people who really traverse the idea of what specialty coffee in my mind should be about while working for a company that is highly commercial. And I really respect the way that you are constantly bringing dignity to the baristas in the commercial commercial industry in inverted commas who feel that they are somehow not really craftspeople, but they are craftspeople. Yeah. Our job as baristas is to bring the joy of coffee and other beverages that we're serving to people's days. At some point, and I think that that's coming quicker than normal, that's going to involve a lot less of us actually making the beverage and it's going to be automated by machines. And, you know, we've explored that a lot through this series. I want to congratulate you on the head and the heart that you bring to your job and to this industry. Because I know it hasn't been easy for you to navigate that, Um, but you do it with such class, my friend. And so I want to thank you for the way that you contribute to our industry in that way. Well, thank you for having me and being part of the family within the family of (laughs) specialty coffee (laughs) and for highlighting the voices you highlight like I listen to a lot of them and um it's just amazing the people you 
you attract to yourself and that you guys pour into each other. So the whole map it forward community is kind of a huge gift. It makes Thank me feel like it. I belong. And you do. You really, really do. Um, if, if people want to get in contact with you, how do they do that? 206 946. No, um, <laughs> 2754. <do> that. <laughs> um, you can message me on the ecstatic expression on Instagram. Um, Links in the show notes. That's, yeah, that's the easiest way. And I am available to anyone who wants to chat. And where, which Starbucks, you're in Aurora, uh, Denver? Yeah, I live in Buckley. Okay, perfect. Um, Aurora. Thank you again, sir. This has been fantastic and I can't wait for the next conversation. I promise it won't be four hours out of our day to do this next time. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Thanks again, Jimmy. Um, And guys, I hope that you've all enjoyed this series. Uh, Stay tuned for the next one. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Peace, love, and peanut butter. (laughs) Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.